God. Hi, we guys. are back. Right. We are back. Terminator. So hello, everyone. My name is Liani. I am a professor at the Federal Institute of Paraíba. And my sign is this. Okay? And I'm Tiago Costa, one of the coordinators of FOPLI and also a professor at the Federal University of Paraíba. And I'm so happy to have you here in this final plenary, closing plenary of yes. the seventh edition of Happy. We are so happy, Liane. Yes. Yes, it's an extraordinary Saturday. Guys, thank you so much for being with us since the morning. You have been here since 9 a.m., yes, right? Yes. Sure. Uh, just to tell you all that we are both vaccinated and we are tested. So don't worry, guys. God. Yes, okay. that's why we are close to Yes, right? yes. <laughs> that's it. And uh, now just tell you something about this, the both um, lectures that we had. Now I know that we have top one, the a, trend, a trending topic. topic. What's the trending topic that we have now? New Zealand. Yes, so the platform that Julia Hedges spoke and Nell, Nell No and Julia Hedges, they spoke a very interesting platform. So great ideas for teachers, huh? I, I just wrote down here because I'm going to use it. Yeah. I'm going to check everything there. Okay, so now let's go on with your, our lineup. So now we are going to have our final plenary with Jonathan Ferreira, an English teacher who is taking his PhD at University of British Columbia in Canada. Jonathan is a very, we don't say old partner and friend, but no. we have to say that, but it's a, a long, experience. long, long, experience. <laughs> a very experienced <laughs> partner from Epopoli. And we are always, happy to have him here because all these all the contributions that Jonathan brings it's also um, they are always amazing and uh, to start I'd like to present our uh, guest and uh, I'm going to read his bio yes and then the screen is all yours Jonathan all right. Okay, okay. So, Jonathan Ferreira is a doctoral student in language and literacy education at the UBC, University of British Columbia. He holds a Master of Arts in Literacy Education and a Bachelor of Arts in English Language at Literature at Federal University of Paraíba. He's also a CELTA certified English teacher with a decade of teaching experience in Brazil and also in Canada. So welcome, Jonathan, to close our event. And as I told you, the, the screen is all yours. Thank you so much, Tiago. Not a great way to begin by you saying that I'm an old, experienced person, but that's okay. I'll, I'll take that as a compliment. I'll take that sorry, as a compliment. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but such an honor to be here again. Uh, this is my fifth year presenting at EPI. I've been a teacher for 10 years, and this is the fifth year that I'm a collaborator, and I couldn't be more grateful to be part of this team and to share what I have come to learn over these 10 years of teaching experience. Great. Um, um, I'd like to begin by first acknowledging that I'm speaking from the, um, I don't know, should I, let me see if I can do this, uh, Tiago. Mm -hmm. You know that I have trouble sharing screen. Could you share my slides now? Could yes. you, there you go, thank you so much. So I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking from the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. Um, this land is situated in a place of learning for the Musqueam people who have for millennia passed on their culture, history, and traditions from one generation to the next one. I'm uh, grateful to live, to work, and to study on this land. And I'm also grateful for these wonderful sunsets that I have witnessed over these three years. One of them is me there. We had several heat waves here in Vancouver this year and it was 10 p.m. soaking wet. It was boiling hot and I just wanted to go for a swim and there I was witnessing this, this amazing sunset. Um, I'd like to invite you all to talk um, about 
this theme which I brought today entitled, or my presentation is entitled Peak Trade, uh, Zooming in English and Content-Based Learning. As I said, um, as, we, as you presented myself, introduced myself, that it's been 10 years that I teach in Brazil and Canada. And just recently I was invited, I was asked to reflect on my professional identity uh, as a language teacher, as an English language teacher. And in this process of self-reflection, um, I recognize that I've been an entertainer, someone coming in the classroom just for the fun of it, I've been the box ticker, the one who goes over every single method and says, this is what I have to do, I will do. Um, but I also know that in one third of my life, uh, 10 years, uh, I've, I'm in the process of becoming, as Freire says, as Bakhtin says as well, I'm as a co-being in the world, in this constant pro a process of transformation and learning with others. Um, and so I'd like to take this moment to invite um, English teachers, um, coordinators, curriculum designers, administrators, teacher candidates, and everyone in monolingual, bilingual, multilingual uh, school contexts to, as Penny Cook says, to simply unbury our heads from our classrooms and understand that just improving uh, the language learning as a code of our students is not enough. There is much more to be taken into consideration. When we think about uh, content area classrooms, um, it's a place where we can also see these power relations. We can also see and ask ourselves, who is not included in this conversation? Who's not being able to learn math or science? Who is being left out of the table? And so the question I pose here for us to discuss is, can we teach English critically in content area classrooms? And right off the bat, I want to say that yes, yes, we can do that. Um, and there are several ways. We have multimodal resources, they are available. Um, YouTube is out there, News ELA, I'm, con I'm heads down, uh, heads off. I'm completely fascinated by this, um, this platform use it constantly with Lucas and Ellen as well, who work with me, um, and um, we find lots of resources there. But I want us to focus on picture books, more specifically on the stories that we can find in these picture books, that they can help us navigate not just English learning, but science, math, and all together as one. Because as we know, as Freire says, um, making, telling, not uh, Facer, not Freire, he also talks about that, but I mean Facer here, um, making, telling, listening to and reading stories in education is not just something trivial. It's a deadly serious business because we are able to identify and articulate ideas of the future and engage in rich complexities of right. the Jonathan, just hold on. Yes. Can you speak just a little bit slower because of the interpreter? Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Clayton. <laughs> I will take a sip. I will take a sip. Two sips. <laughs> That's okay. It happens. It happens. It's natural. Terribly sorry. Terribly sorry, Clayton. I will, I will slow down. Terribly sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. So as I was saying, these stories are critical. They are essential so that we can uh, start articulating ideas of the future and try to understand how we can bring these ideas and incorporate these ideas in our in our present. Um, picture books and the stories they bring allow us to bring context to math, science, social studies classes. They allow us to talk about language, language about language. That What I mean by that is when we open a picture book and we understand how these, um, how these texts are organized, we can start unpacking this language and simplifying the work that our students have to do to make meaning. Um, these picture books also bring uh, an array of multimodal aids that we can use and take advantage of. They allow us to make these connections, these social, personal, and cultural connections. Most importantly, by reading stories 
And uh, seeing how the language of science, the language of math or social studies is there, we are able to model and model and then model again until our students become more independent. I like to say that using picture books is also a way of acting in the world. As I said from the very beginning of being or co-being in the world, it's what Prairie brings as praxis, as meaningful act action. <clears throat> Last but not least, when we think of these picture books, um, as you can see at the bottom corner there, we are trying to make something that is cognitively demanding and context reduced as a science class can be or a math class can be to a place in a more balance, right in the middle there, where students can navigate and make sense, participate and see themselves as part of this conversation. Once again, they can see themselves as part of the, the table, sitting at the table and conversing. I brought some examples that I would like to share with you as in ways we can use these picture books. Um, this one by Florence and Grimard, uh, entitled Stolen Words, brings forward a story of a little girl talking to her grandfather. And in this conversation, she learns how he lost his words. They are talking about the context of residential schools. Uh, these were boarding schools here in, Van here in Canada, across Canada, not just Vancouver, but across Canada, where indigenous children were taken from their communities into these schools to have the Indian taken out of there so that they could learn the white way of living in the world. And so such a difficult topic to discuss, it's sensitive, but also important that we have to bring forward. And so in a social studies classroom, grade four, um, we think that the content objective, as it's, as it's said in the British Columbia curriculum, um, we are trying to unpack the impact of colonization on first people societies in British Columbia and Canada. Um, what language can we use? What can we learn from this language? And then here we can say that students will learn saying verbs and question words to inquire about residential schools in Canada with the support of a picture book. And so in this brief part of the text, this excerpt I brought there, we see, I don't remember, he answered. How do you lose your words, Grandpa? She asked. They took them away, he answered. Where did they take them? She asked. So. We see language there and we can help our students grapple and uh, not just grapple, but make sense of this language, grasp this language. That's, that was the verb I was looking for, not grapple, but grasp. They might grapple, but they are grasping meaning and, and position themselves and learn about these residential schools. It's been three years, as I said, that I live in Canada. I've lived in the US before, but if you ask me how long an inch is or how heavy a pound is, I'm terribly sorry, I will not be able to tell you because this is not the, the unit of measurement that I grew up with. This is not the language that I learned in my home country. And so let's think about these immigrants, that these newcomers that come to Canada um, and they have to sit in a mathematics class and learn about inches and pounds. We can see the struggle, or we can see also in the Brazilian context where students go and they learn about containers, but uh, what a pint is, or um, how can we make this simpler? How can we help them make sense of this language? And, just see themselves using this language. And then we have this book by measuring uh, by Lauren Leedy, um, Measuring Penny since 1997 has inspired several mathematic teachers to teach measure, measures in, in their classroom. And here, one of the language objectives that we can think of as we look uh, into the text is that we can teach our students comparative adjectives so that they can compare weight, height, length, while reading a picture book. We've been talking about um, 
nurturing a growth mindset. Um, when I came last year and I talked and I had um, Sam and Anna uh, presenting with me, we saw that in multicultural schools, um, nurturing this growth mindset helps students from migrant and refugee background uh, make sense of their world and just cope with the adversities and the challenges that they leave whenever they arrive in the country. And so I have this story here called The Most Magnificent Thing. It's a girl, and I want to repeat, it's a girl who likes making things, that she's into just looking at every single bit of um, maybe a robot that she has there in ways that she can put them together. But she struggles, man. She struggles. There is pain from the very beginning. The pain starts in her finger. It rushes up to her brain and she explodes. It's not her finest moment. So she's dealing with a challenge there. And I'm sure that several other students, not just those from migrant and refugee backgrounds that I mentioned, but those in Brazil as well, um, they, they need some support in the sense of nurturing this growth mindset. And we can bring this in a math class. As I said, um, to me, English learning and teaching is also practices. We are trying, it's practices, it's trying to make sense and be active in the world. And so we, I live in Vancouver, such a wild forest that we have here, magnificent forest. And we have lots, lots of green areas in Brazil as well. And then I wonder, you can also leave uh, in the comments below, have you ever developed any projects with your students that they are either um, planting trees or looking after plants in their houses? What is the point of doing this? Where is the action there? And so we are bringing forward environmental awareness. And when students learn in a science class that plants and animals have observable features, so they know exactly the parts that a tree has or that a plant that they are growing in their house has, they start being more mindful, more conscious. Again, I will bring Freire here in the discussion, the process of conscientization. They become more conscious of what a plant is, what it represents, um, our responsibility towards plants and how they can uh, make our living in this world better. Using picture books um, in content area classrooms is also a way to bring forward social justice and citizenship. It's a way to allow access, um, focus on the change, and most importantly, on the challenge, on challenging um, adversity um, or discriminatory um, discourses. When we think about access, I brought this book called We Are Together. And, and here you can see two excerpts that they say, we may travel alone, free as birds in the sky, but flocking together, we soar and we fly high. If storm clouds gather and we are caught in the rain, let's splash through the puddles till the sun shines again. If we think about a social studies classroom, a grade two social studies classroom, we can see that the content objective that we have there is students will know how people's needs and wants are met in communities. Here on the, on the right side, we have a text, um, Lucas and, um, and Ellen, who presented before me at 2 p.m. They used to teach our students how to construct narratives and how to use these cause and effect conjunctions to connect the ideas within a text. And they're talking about this, this cat that was lost and how community members, they got together in order to solve this problem. How they started this crowdsource funding in order to um, go out there and see if they could find look. It's not just about learning narrative tenses or learning what because or as a result or consequently is. It's about how they can use this language and how they can make sense of these theme 
these ideas to position themselves in the world. I often cite this book, it's very close to my heart in several ways. This was one of the, the picture books I explored um, when I developed my master thesis, when I wrote my master thesis. Um, and not only that, you have the picture book, you have the novel, you have a Netflix movie, you have a TED talk by, um, by William, the main character. So you can see that when we think about context, they come all together. And we are thinking about uh, picture books as, as, a, as a tool, as a resource for change, because we can promote a more equitable content teaching in a large scale systematic change. And how is that possible? Let's say that we are learning the content objective here. Students will know about devices that transform and they, that change and or transform energy. I know that we are living in Brazil, a water crisis there. Um, we don't have this water crisis here, but there are several other crises that I could bring forward. But when thinking about this water crisis that we have there, can, can students start thinking of ways that they could transform energy or use other, other, other sources like the wind in order to produce energy? That's what William in his story did. There was a drought, uh, his community was suffering. His sister had to leave their home because she couldn't bear all the suffering of being without water. Their plantation had been completely destroyed. And he was the only one in the school that had attended secondary school. He was the only one who could resort to his knowledge, to his scientific knowledge to come up with a solution. And that's exactly what he did. When we think about language objectives that we can use in this classroom, we can teach students, even at a grade four, ELL learners, English language learners, to use sequencers to explain how devices can produce energy. We can help them construct these explanation texts, this cycle, first I did this, then I did that, I did this because of this or because of that. Here on the, on the right side, I have an example from my master thesis and I'm very grateful um, that I was able to, it will come out now in November that I was able to write with my, my super supervisor, Maureen Kendrick, and with the teacher who I worked with, we were able to publish this work. And it shows um, a windmill. So one of the students that we worked with, she said, I want to build a windmill as well. But it wasn't really a way of transforming energy. She thought about a windmill differently. She said, you know, I kind of had my own idea, but it's kind of copying the boy who harnessed, he, she said, harvested the wind. But I added a few of my touches. So think about the context that we talked about and how students can position themselves. She was not just copying, she was actually transforming, redesigning what she had learned in a science classroom in order to make meaning, in order to position herself. And then she says, bit of uh, just a sip for the two of us, Clayton. She starts, she starts explaining. I put a windmill like the one this, the, the, the William, that the main character did, and it was blowing the waterfall down because the water was stuck between rocks. Yeah, we could use one of those to get all the dirt. Here, she blended two stories that she had read, the boy who harnessed the wind with the windmill, and we had read um, a picture book called um, The Water Princess. Um, where this little girl had to walk miles and miles with her family to find drinkable water. And so she said, well, I'm going to use a windmill to solve two problems. I will first get this water that is stuck in between rocks. It will start to flow and they will, it will be drinkable water that our community can use. So even though the idea here was making a device to transform energy, 
she found different ways to solve different problems that might exist in her real community or her imagined community, somewhere where would she perceive herself, where she would see herself as an active community member. We, the same class, the same class that I was asked to reflect on my teacher identity, we had this class that we talked about racial linguistics. And I tell you, it felt like it was a Netflix kind of TV series that we had these two different, uh, these opposing sides, uh, and they were not necessarily fighting, but they were, um, let's put that way, kindly arguing or critiquing one another. And the whole discussion was around bilingualism, um, additive bilingualism or translanguaging. In one, on the one hand, we had those saying that regardless what we do, if we frame it as translanguage or bilingualism, there is still racial aspects embedded in this discussion. No matter what we do, no matter the kind of support that we build, what has to be changed is the mind of the white, is the person who listens, not the person who speaks. And then we have the other one on the other side saying like, why are we putting it down or bringing down all these efforts that we have developed? Um, we cannot say that racial aspects will disappear. Uh, there is another person, um, she's Indian, I cannot uh, recall her name right now, but she says that the process, it, it's never, we can never think of decolonization as a complete process, but we can think as in the progressive sense, decolonizing. We are in this constant process of going back and forth and observing our society where there is still racial aspects there to be challenged. And then we move forward again and again. And then when I think about um, content area instruction, picture books, we also talked about this last year, is bringing to our classrooms bilingual books, because we will be teaching English, we will be teaching math, science, and social studies, but there will be these, these other, let's put that way, because in, in the middle of this discussion that I brought forward, the Netflix TV series kind of thing, uh, one of the arguments is that language does not exist. Um, but seeing language as non-existent or just as a fluid and dynamic flow uh, between one and another system of codes, we can have these picture books there that will help students make sense of specific and abstract concepts at the same time that they are learning English. And they have this, this system of codes they have learned earlier to resort to. So as Cummings, uh, says he's one of those who were in the TV series I mentioned, which is not a TV series, just th that was the way I interpreted it. Um, we can say that instruction promote, in in instructional promotion of additive forms of bilingualism can challenge prevailing societal power structures and can position teachers as agents of biliteracy. Um, I started this, uh, this talk saying that stories are important, that I started telling you my own story as, a, as an English language teacher and how I have navigated these different nuances of being an entertainer, uh, box ticker, just following methods, as Penny Cook says, being a technician. Um, I. I'm in the process of becoming a critical language teacher. I go back and forth the same way as I talked about decolonizing. I'm also decolonizing myself or making myself critical. I have the uncritical going hand in hand. I try all the time to be critical. I'm always mindful, but I cannot deny that there are uh, elements of my um, my teaching experiences and my learning experiences, they are still 
um, to be challenged, to be addressed. They are still uncritical. Um, we talked about stories in content area classrooms, but not just seeing stories as fun, as gripping or colorful, but stories that can help us connect these two worlds that have long been seen as two sides, two opposing parts, English learning and content-based learning, math, science, social studies, and so forth. The idea is that through picture books, we can zoom in this English and content-based learning and bring them together so that students in Brazil, in Canada, or elsewhere in the world, they can sit at the table and they can be part of the conversation. I'd like to end my presentation here today by quoting Chimamanda Adichie, who I had the pleasure and the honor to see her live here in Vancouver in 2018, 2019, if I'm not mistaken. And she says, stories, they matter. Many stories matter. Stories have been used to dispossess and to malign, but stories can also be used to empower and to humanize. Stories can break the dignity of a people, but stories can also repair that broken dignity. I'd like to invite you all to um, call B or call Dean with me. Let's chat now for this next 10 to 15 minutes and try to exchange ideas and see how you have tried to address these power relations or these questions of access. Who is included, who is not included in your classrooms and in what ways you can include these students. These are my references and I'm happy to share these slides with you afterwards. All these uh, books that I have shared today you can find online. They are all available on YouTube. Several read alouds that you can use there. Thank you. So, can you hear us? Yes? Okay. Yes. So thank you, Jonathan. What an extraordinary presentation. Huh? Yes, yes, I totally agree. And Mariana also. Mariana has written lots of comments here. Uh, the last one is this. Uh, let's, let's, let's tag here. Let's see the comment. Oh, can, 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 you, go, can you go to the first one? That's that one. Congratulations one. on your talk. Just hold on, Jonathan. So I'm, I'm waiting for all the questions and then we can discuss. Yes, for sure. <laughs> so, this one's from Mariana. Mari from Canada. Is she close to you? Does she live um, here? Um, she's, no, I'm on the west, she's on the east. Uh, but that's I'm okay. Gonna... What is distance, right? We, you are in João Pessoa, I'm in Canada, and we are still chatting here. So there is no such distance. There is no such thing. Just like we talked, is there language? Is there distance? <laughs> so that's it. So Mariana is saying this, that she is so happy with this, uh, this successful career that you are following as a professional and as a researcher, Jonathan. So thank you so much for having me, uh, for being here with us sharing all your experience right yes perfect we have another comment i think jonathan would like uh to listen to about uh, it's from angelica maya yes wonderful talk jonathan well done fop members and colleagues for organizing this great event so thank you angelica for being here with <laughs> us today uh we have questions can we go with um uh, yes go, go, jonathan. Go. <laughs> Let's see the question. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's it's from Francielle, okay? okay. Uh, it's often said that there's no environmental justice without social justice. How can learning a foreign language contribute to global justice? What do you think? Well, we have social justice, we have environmental justice, and we are talking about global justice. So three things coming together. And it's it's justice. And then I will pick on this little word, justice, and which is not little. Um, 
And I talked about praxis. If we want to bring environmental justice, if we want to bring, bring global justice or social justice, there must be action. There must be consciousness, awareness. And how can we raise this awareness? I give you one example today, which is through, through stories, through picture books. Uh, but this is not the only way we've been talking about. Again, I can cite Dewey here, and then he will talk about experiential learning. Um, more recently, you, uh, working with First Nations communities and learning from them more than ever, we are talking about place-based learning. It's not just being in the classroom, but being out there, being in the world, going to um, the forest, learning how to fish, how to use and live off the land that we human beings, we don't know how to do that as social beings. We don't know how to live off the land anymore as, as our ancestors, as our, our, our indigenous communities in Brazil uh, were able to do back then. So when we think about global environmental social justice, it's through action. This is one of the ways that we can do, uh, either through stories, place-based learning, experiential learning. Um, I think I have a long way to go. I'm just beginning. I know it's 10 years, but I keep saying 10 years because to me it's a milestone, but it's just the beginning of what I intend to do, what I'm passionate about, and I want to, to contribute to this change as well, to this, changes, to, to this change, to this access or lack of access, as I mentioned. Um, but also this point of challenging what is what needs to be addressed in the world. So Jonathan, I was thinking, uh, I was reflecting here about your talk and I mentioned with Liane, how connected is your speech to Kleber's speech this morning? Yeah. So very much so, yeah. Yes, it was very, very, very special lectures we had today. Yeah. And uh, I think Franciele, she also yeah. mentioned in the chat that being in the open sea, as Kleb said this morning. So that's it. It's exactly what you said. That was actually my idea. I woke up, it was five in the morning. Okay, don't tell Kleb that, but I didn't get <laughs> to the 5 a.m. presentation as it started. Yeah, let's say I got that sick again. <laughs> Um, and then at 6 a.m. I was able to see what he was saying and what he was talking about. Uh, but I wanted to bring this connection. I wanted our, our conversation to be aligned. As I mentioned earlier to Tiago and Diani, I wish I had been able to include in this talk as well assessment that my dear Albi Alberto brought um, right, out, right, I think, the second presentation, right, the recorded talk. But I try to find a way to connect everyone to say, we are all sitting at the same table and this table here, we are trying to address what is to be critical uh, in, in Brazil and elsewhere in the world. What is it that we can do to leave this, this period of darkness? And I don't see ourselves living in periods of darkness anymore. We are very much informed. It's sad, however, that there is a lot of misinformation out there. This is something that we need to bring to the table, that we need to discuss and find ways to inform ourselves, but not just from one perspective. We have the idiomatic expression on, on the one hand, on the other hand, or we have this, the, the other side of the coin, right? And mo most often nowadays, we are only looking into one of the, the coins, one of the sides of this coin. And so, here is a table, Epi is a table. We are all sitting at this table and we are looking at these different uh, challenges that we have in our world that need to be, that they, they need to be addressed. One of them is misinformation. Um, and I've been thinking, I've been thinking in ways that we can look into that. Um, previously, I talked about the multi literacies pedagogy and the multi literacies framework. Um, and then uh, it's not a critique. I believe that they were very much politically informed, uh, the New London group, and they were trying to bring and to address all these, all these matters. But they couldn't predict. We were talking about 1996. The internet was just like beginning to be part of our lives. And so 
how would they ever predict that the internet, media as they saw as the solution to many of our problems of this gap that exists in the world would actually bring us apart and not closer together as the idea was back then. And so this is something that I've been grappling with and finding ways to incorporate this and to bring this to the table. Okay. We totally agree with you, Jonathan. Uh, talking about misinformation, how serious it is. And we are uh, facing, uh, I, I, I would say difficult times, hard times, but we have to be very open. And as you said, we need this table. We, we need this round table, mm -hmm. like King Arthur, right? We need to talk. Mm -hmm. And because we need to talk, there is one more question. Yes. So this one is from Nicole Gouveia. Uh, Jonathan, would you recommend any platform that teachers could use for literacy, literary resources, such as these ones you presented? Yeah, absolutely. So first and foremost, let me just um, add to what Tiago mentioned right off the beginning of my presentation, saying the news ELA website. Uh, heads off, I'm passionate about this platform. You have so much content, but in there you find mostly information reports. So if we think about literature or novels or short stories, we can't find them often um, by using news ELA. So here are the recommendation, uh, other pieces of recommendation that I would like to, to suggest. Uh, there is, um, I learned this from Bettina, from Elizabeth. Thank you so much. You have changed my life, uh, <laughs> Elizabeth, after sharing this with me. But you have Common Lit, C O M M O N L I T. Um, and there, it's, a, it's an American website. So the focus, the perspective is very much American. But you have an array of resources. You have fables, you have novels, you have short stories, you have poems, and I've been trying to use those. Um, there is something called common work, uh, no, uh, common works, no, um, common lead, read works. So as you are reading, read and it works. So read works is another platform that I like using as well for resources. As for picture books, um, my suggestion to you is the following. Think of a theme, let's say citizenship. You put citizenship, picture books, read aloud. And then you will see how many we have out there. Let's say you want to talk about um, math, picture books. So you write math, picture books, read aloud. Come, that comes an array of them. Science, picture books, read aloud. No wonder I, I try to entitle this talk as Zooming In because I came across these um, resources Zooming In with my students in Brazil and here as well. And I say, how can I find a way to teach them? How can I find available resources out there? And I had to go to YouTube. Uh, which is not like Google that teaches us everything, but it's close enough. It's becoming <laughs> closer and closer to Google than ever. Um, and that's where I found them. So these are just a few that I would suggest, and I'm sure that you can find lots there. Let's talk to okay. Glaucia Ruda, because Glaucia is asking us if this lecture will be on YouTube. Yes, it's going to be on YouTube, on YouTube. Okay, so just relax. You can watch it three times, four times, <laughs> ten yeah. times, no problem. We just like to mention that all the other talks, they are going to be available when Epi finishes, because we kind of close the, the, the past talks to give the, 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 the availability for the others' presentations, okay? So that's why the talks, the recorded talks, Plebis Plenary, they are all closed now, but in the end of the event, they are going to be open for everyone, yes? Yeah. So don't worry. 
Uh, and Jonathan, I think that you can make a list for us if you could, of course. Uh, you made a you make a list with this platform, and then we can have all of them on Instagram. Mm -hmm, we can mm -hmm. post uh, with the subtitle, okay, with your uh, piece of advice, suggestions. Yes, yes. So I would do more. I would do more. I would tell people to go watch uh, Lucas's and Helen's presentation this afternoon because they end their presentation with a list of the resources that we use and the platforms as well. So sure. if you haven't had the chance to watch, um, I would ask you to, to check it out because the, the lists are there, but I'm more than pleased to, to share as well. This is something that I'm uh, working now here. Um, I'm, a, I'm a teaching assistant at UBC and I work closely with teacher candidates. Um, we are in this process. We are in this process of trying to think of anti-racist pedagogies. Um, we are trying to address racism that, that is embedded in our, um, in our, our schools. And uh, just recently, together with um, Giovanna Lucci, uh, Lucci she, she is from USP. She, she, she's, she originally studied uh, at University of Sao Paulo has done her master's in Cambridge and she's now doing her PhD here. Um, and together we try to put a list of um, titles that address racism or all the, or the um, how could I put in a, in a kind way, all the, all the sensitive, all the issues, all the topics that we need to address. What we are trying to do with this, uh, this new approach is to offer not just one perspective, but another perspective as well. Let me give you one example. And I know I finished earlier my presentation with these slides because I wanted to have this chance to chat. I wanted this chance to co-be with you guys. It's been so long. I, <laughs> I wanted to have conversations with you. Um, and. Um, when we think about science, for example, since it's content-based learning, uh, let's say that we are learning the life cycle of the salmon, the fish salmon. And so if we think of a text, it's an information report, you can see the cycle happening as well, but who would benefit from this cycle? How can we take care? How can we make sure that this cycle happens uh, smoothly? that we don't interfere with this natural cycle of life. And so when we get an information report together with a narrative, maybe coming from a picture book, for example, you see that you have a community that lives off the salmon, but just recently with the construction of an industry nearby dumping trash in the waters, this cycle has been interrupted and the community has no fish. The fish they had before are all dying and all the other problems existing in that environment due to this problem with the life cycle of the salmon. We pair them and we offer students different ways to perceive and to learn in science classrooms. It's not just learning the, the code or how how it goes from the river to the ocean and back to the river, but how much we interfere with this cycle and how much we suffer when this cycle is, um, is harmed. So this is just one way of uh, seeing how we can, again, um, get out of the, the darkness or and go to the open seas as Clever talked about. So thank you, Jonathan for the great talk, yes. Uh, I think people, they would stay here all afternoon long and evening and night, but unfortunately, everybody needs to uh, go home. Well, go home, no, everybody is at we home. Are, yes. I am at home, you aren't. Yes, I need to go home. <laughs> and, but we are very happy for, uh, for everything that you presented, all your talk, yes, and, uh, I just have to say thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, thank and you. For thank everything. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank um, the FOPLI team. 
thank you, Clayton, for bearing with me for these many, yes. many minutes that we are together, only on your own. You rock it, man. You are you are awesome, and I'm very grateful yes. to have you here. <laughs> yes. And for all, the, all, all those listening to us and, and being here with us, uh, thank you so much for um, co-being with me uh, in this morning afternoon. Yeah. Yes, morning afternoon. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> morning slash afternoon, right? So, oh. Jonathan, have a wonderful weekend. We are here on holiday, but for you, it's just a weekend, right? <laughs> Not even, <easy>, but yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, Jonathan, so thank you so much. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Let's... And looking forward to our next epi, or looking forward to meeting you in Brazil uh, in December, hopefully. Wow, great. Uh, great news, huh? Uh, it is. Spoiler, yes. Uh, <laughs> so bye-bye. Bye, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. Bye. Thank you a lot. Bye, bye Clayton. Bye. Thank you so much yes, for Clayton. your interpretation. You rock. Thank you, Clayton. <laughs> Guys, you continue with us. Uh, my God, lots of things today. I have been so excited this morning. <laughs> Lots of emotions. Uh, it was so nice to have. Uh, even though we say that there is no emotion when we are on the virtual um, mm. environment, but there is. Don't tell me that. Yes. There is at least one emotion: <laughs> gratitude. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so nice to see, uh, to see, to talk to people that we have this kind of. Um, I don't know if we say that's a kind of dependence, not dependence, but people that have lots of experience that can share with us. So that's one of the advantages that we have of online world, this internet world. So talking about... Just a minute. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to... Just a footnote. Mm. Clayton is not here with us anymore uh, because we had a, a kind of trouble with Poliana and she couldn't substitute him. And as he interpreted all the plenary, he needs to take a rest right now. And now the, the rest of the final remarks, we are not going to have uh, any interpretation, unfortunately. But I would like to affirm that FOPLI and UFPB and EFPB, we are always thinking about inclusive education and everything else. Okay, so thank you, Clayton. I know you are here in the background. And uh, thank you, Poliana. You are home, maybe watching us. And uh, now we can go on. Sure. Yes? <laughs> of course we can go on. And we are going on with something new that mm. happened this year. Yes. I don't know if people pay attention. It's There is a, a new logo here. It's close to Liani, yes? Did you pay attention that the Epi <laughs> logo is different this year? Yes. I hope so. I hope they paid attention because it's a very nice logo. Yes, very nice logo. It's a modern world and we have a modern logo. Mm -hmm. I think that we should explain yes. the backstage of the logo creation. Yes, logo creation I... is not easy. Yes. There is something special. Mm -hmm. And we have a video for you guys talking about this experience of creating the logo and all the reasons for this logo. Let me just share my screen, just a minute. And then, when we come back, we are going to tell you something very important. Mm, mm, Things that mm. we love. Yes. I can stamp my... Uh, it's okay? Just Yes. My stamp of approval. Stamp we of are approval. going to love it, yes. But just when they come back, besides so doing lots let's of do things. It. So I'm going to mute. Elegant, timeless, modern, natural. Welcome to Epi's new visual identity, rebranded to be a reflection of João Pessoa, of Paraíba's essence, translated in symbols, colors, and shapes. The sun, 
placed in the highest and most oriental area of our logo, manually traced in the same manner as in xylography, technique that illustrates northeastern Cordell. Just like in Paraíba, our sun first enlightens every corner of our hearts, gives us life, and, as Caetano would say, is the father of all colors. White, orange, yellow, beige, brown, white, because in its core, white light is the mixing of all colors, because in every beginning, there is white, it's ethereal and conscient. Orange, because it warms up the eyes, it's the color that dominates all skies in every morning and evening, it's the orange that predominates during the droughts that created our strong people. Yellow, because it represents the truest spectrum of radiance, because it creates the perfect transition to happiness and positivity, it demands your attention without whispering a word. Beige, because it rains on our seashores, because its simplicity naturally allows us to look at the ocean, it guides us to water and gives us a steady ground for our bare feet. Brown, because it's strong and not afraid to deliver death to our eyes. Because wherever it is placed, it is bold, serious, and elegant. All of these colors, shapes, and symbols bring us together, warming our beings and lighting our future. Because all of that is the signature of the Fopi, and it's what Epi represents. I love this video. I think it's the Did third like it? time that I watch it, and every time that I watch, I watch it. My God, again, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> so, uh, Mary, Clayton asked to come again. Clayton, you are an next to, man to to give her about the the warning we gave us. Okay, uh, that's perfect. So. Uh, Let's repeat the, again what I said before the video, that Clayton, he's not going to be here with us anymore because he's not going to have a substitute. Unfortunately, Poliana, she's not fine to continue in the event, but we are, would like to say thank you to Poliana and also thank you, Clayton, for all this amazing interpretation. And by now, uh, during the, the rest of the event, yes, the final remarks, we are going to have the, just me and Liani, and Clayton is going to take a rest because he's pretty tired, I yes. think, yes? <laughs> Thank you, Clayton. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. So much. So let's continue. Uh, talking about the certificates, can you tell us something about certificates? Yes, yeah, something very important for you guys who are watching us. Uh, before we send your certificates of participation, we have a form that people are posting on the chat, and we would like you to give us a feedback about the event, and then right away we are going to send you the certificates. Yes. Okay? That's the important information. And we have two surprises. Mm. You, are, you are full of surprises. Come on. Yes, Come on. I love surprises. Yes. I love to receive, but I prefer to give surprises to everyone. I prefer spoilers. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> the, you have to wait for the second spoiler because we have one that I can tell you right now. Yes. The second spoiler, just after the first part of the surprise, okay? Is it a raffle? What do you think I should do with this guy here? Yes. <laughs> so, do you remember we that are I... going to have something before, but after that, we are going to have a raffle. Yes, sorry. Do you remember that I used to practice Muay Thai? So ah, please, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Don't yeah. give all the spoilers it. at once. It's not like this. <laughs> okay, so right now we are going to have a performance. <laughs> Remember this... that uh, we posted on our Instagram that we are uh, we had we are going to have a musical attraction. I think they all they all remember. Yes, that. You, yes. you said that. Yes, <laughs> you, you couldn't keep your 
Let's see. I know that. It's okay. So we are going to have a presentation, a performance. Yes. It's not on my cell phone. It's on your cell I phone. I have to ah, read about the singer. That's yes. my revenge. Because all the information is here on my cell phone. Now it's in his. Uh, that's the perfect partner I am. I know that. So we are going to have a performance. Um uh, by the singer, Matheus Pimenta. Mm. Can you tell us something about Matheus? Of course. First of all, he is my friend. Yes? Ah. One of my best friends since childhood. Yeah? So oh it's a pleasure to have this presentation, this performance by Matheus. Uh, Matheus began his musical studies at age of six, experimenting with various instruments, such as piano, flute, cello, guitar, and oboe, mixing his taste for classical music and MPB with jazz, soul, and rock. He's very well known here in João Pessoa and in Paraíba and in other states nearby, but I think that people around Brazil needs, the, the, everybody needs to, to meet Matheus and uh, watch his presentation. And this presentation was especially tailored for the happy participants. Yeah. Yes. Very good surprise. Let's watch the first it. one. Yes. Let's see. I'm going to share you with you. So while we are doing this, let me give uh, um, just some some information about the form. Just hold on. The form will be sent to your emails. Okay. So just hold on because of the certificates. So. Hello everyone, my name is Matheus Pimenta. I am a singer and composer based in João Pessoa, Paraíba. I have to confess I am very honored by this invitation and singing to you. It's a very, it's very challenging thing to your teachers and participants from the EPI conference. I'm trying here not to fail too much on my accent and not fail too much on my accuracy and on my English skills as a whole. But let's go. I'm very happy and glad being here too. Uh, I'm going to sing a couple songs for you. The first one is called Damon. It's from a project of mine called Skybone Seasoning. You can watch Damon, the video of Damon on YouTube, and you can listen to Damon on Spotify, Deezer, Apple Music, and all these this main digital streaming platforms. Okay, so let's go then. Uh, Damon, I hope you enjoy it. To God's before the night, they are now bound in the knees. Staying on the line, staring at the sky, whatever side of the streets. Praying there on side to God's before the night, they are now bound in the knees. Squeeze and reason and emotion, they are chests. And broken pieces, cleaning out the mess. The day man, the dream man, we find open eyes. The day man, the dream man, I stay awake and smile. The day man, the dream man, we find open eyes. Staying on the line, staring at the sky, whatever side of the streets. 
praying there outside to God's before the night. They're not bending their knees, staying on the line, staring at the sky, whatever side of the streets. Praying there outside to God's before the night. They're now bending their knees. It's reason, reason, and emotion. Clear chests. Mixing broken pieces. Cleaning on the mat. To, to to say its name. I hope you all recognize it. Uh, it is a very needy song nowadays because it uh, it feels like hope. It sounds like hope when we listen to it. Uh, and as its songwriter is to to sing all things must pass and this song is like a very fresh like fresh air it's like light it enlightens all the environment when we sing it i hope you feel like i feel when i sing it uh, so let's go thank you all here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. Do, 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 do. Here comes the sun. I say it's all right. Here comes the sun, do, do, do. here 
comes the sun and say it's alright. Thank you all. See you. Hope you enjoyed. It. Follow me on my social networks and links. I hope you visit me and listen to my songs and watch my videos. See you next time. Bye bye. So here I am again. So my God, what a nice presentation. Oh, what a nice performance. Thank you, Mateus. Thank you for this nice, nice, wonderful performance. And I'm so happy because Mateus, he kindly answered one of my requests because this song, I asked him to record, yes? Here Comes the Sun. It's a song that is so special for me during my whole life. And, uh, and so, and uh, for this event, when we changed the logo and everything that we need now in terms of happiness and renewing things. So here comes the sun, here comes the sun is the perfect song. So thank you, Mateus. Thank you for this gift. Yes, it was wonderful. Okay, guys, did you realize that we have something different here? Yes, where is my hostess? Yes, where is she? Where are you? Oh. I'm here, Tiago. You're really trying to fire me, but <laughs> I'm a Brazilian person. I never give up. Yes. So here comes the sun. Here comes yes. the sun. Yes. <laughs> Rafa, you were all there. Yeah, here comes the sun. Yes. yes, I love it. Rafael said, here comes the sun. I, we don't sing as well as Mateus, but we try, yes? That's it. And now we are going to have our final surprise. Final moment, people. I think everybody's waiting for that. So we are going to draw raffles here today to finish this amazing event. I hope you enjoy it, all the moments together. I hope you posted a lot of tags at our social medias, our Padlet. So. If you, didn't, if you didn't have the opportunity to visit the Padlet, go there right now and post a photo, a link, and everything, because the, the virtual wall is amazing, full of things, full of messages. So thank everyone who put a message on the Padlet. So, Leanne, what we have here, can you tell us? It's the surprise. We are going to have a raffle here with nine gifts. Nine so, gifts? Nine lucky gifts. People will be here with us. Great. Yes. Yes. So we'd like to thank all the partners here for this uh, raffle. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. Okay. So first of all, we'd like to thank uh, Cambridge University Press because we are going to have two online courses for the participants. Thank you, Stanford Editora, because we are going to have four kits by stand for and thank you uh prolingui the post-graduation in linguistics at the federal university of paraiba who kindly conceived us three amazing books this this one here semantica na sala das semanticas a sala de aula so it's a conversation for all language teachers and it's an amazing and interesting book full of articles that you can use in your classroom. Okay, so we are going to have three books. And like one of the organizers is <laughs> yeah, so this guy is, here. Yes, He's so yes. tall. Oh my God, this one. Yeah, okay, thank you, Tiago. It's much better. <laughs> Let me show the book yes. here, like this. This is the book, yes. So it's by Mercado de Letras, all right? Yeah. So we have so, three of this. Mm -hmm. We have uh, two online courses. So, Three books, 
two online courses from Cambridge University Press. That, let me tell them the, the courses. Okay. Teaching grammar is the first, and the second, teaching writing. Okay. So here, from now on, five gifts, but we have more. We have more four kits from Stanford dictionary, t shirt, and a book. So we have in total nine gifts. Tiago, can you tell them how we are going to have the, the raffle? How yes. can you, yeah? So we are going to, uh, to sh I'm going to share my screen here to show you the, the, the drawing. And then we are going to draw the nine numbers in a row. Yeah. The four first numbers, they are going to receive the four kits by Stanford. Okay? Four first numbers, the four kits by Stanford. The next three numbers, they are going to receive the books. Yeah. And the final two numbers, they are going to receive the courses. All right? And something very important, uh, uh, important information. It's your time. Yes. Uh, please, all the winners, I would like you to send us an email to fopley at gmail.com. Please, guys, write in the chat, people from the committee, fopley at gmail.com. So, for example, you, you want a, a book and say, hi, fopley, I want the book. So my name is... I live somewhere else. And then we are going to uh, set up the, the meeting for the for the gifts, yeah. okay? For the presents, all right? So let me share my screen while I'm you talk nervous. to them. Oh my God. Are you nervous? Oh my God. Guys, can you uh, put some uh, hearts on the chat? I love hearts. Put lots of hearts there. It's so nice to have you here. Thank you so much. Of course, we have to thank lots of people. But first of all, thank you for being here since the morning, since 9 yes. a.m. Yes. Thank you. It's so nice to see how many people we have uh, have been with us mm -hmm. sharing this Saturday, the first day of a holiday. So thank you so much. Ah, thank That's you, it. Don. Thank you, David. Yeah. Yes, who won? <laughs> thank you, hearts. Yes. Okay, so uh, 242 participants in room for yeah. the seventh edition of Happy, and then nine of them are going to be the the lucky ones. The lucky ones, yeah. yes. And so we are going go. to have all the names. Yes. Yeah, so we need some time because people the 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 backstage the backstage the committee the backstage. they are going to send in the chat all the names the backstage right? okay the backstage so, is here three two <laughs> one my god okay so here are the numbers so they are going to check all the numbers oh my god let me put it here aline isabella and amanda with this ana carolina carol carol Fernando, João, thank you. Luana, thank you. I love hearts. So, the four first numbers, remember the kids? Yes. They are 168, 229, let's see if I have them. 144, and 27. Oh my God, let's see if we have I here. I think you are all... So... We are going to wait. Uh, here, uh, I'm, I'm listening here in the in the phone that people are. They you are want going to, to talk? For. I want to talk about my heart. <laughs> <laughs> you talk. I'm really nervous. My our backstage, please send to hear the names. Oh my god, a hundred sixty. I'm nervous. A hundred sixty-eight. Look at the name. A hundred sixty-eight. Just a minute. Uh, it's in the order. Jessica Lohan Gonzaga da Silva Machado. So please, Jessica, send us a message, and then we are going to send uh, the message to set up the day and the way to give you the present, okay? Oh, at, at gmail.com. Don't forget. 
Oh my God. So Jess, Jessica, you were the first next, lucky next, girl. Next. Okay. 229. Rosângela Pacífico Marinho. 229. Rosângela Pacífico Marinho. My voice is from the airport. Next. 144. 144 is Morgana Conceição da Cruz Gomes. Morgana Conceição da, Gru, da Cruz Gomes. And the fourth winner... 27. 27. Karina Belizio Pereira de Souza. 27. Karina Belizio Pereira de Souza. So, so you received the kit by Stanford, the dictionary, the other material, and the t shirt. Okay? They are going to be all together in a package. I hope, just I don't for know you, if especially... Jessica, Rosângela, Morgana, Karina are there. Oh my God, are they on the chat? Let me see if they are in the chat. Are uh, they on the chat? Jess, Rosângela, Morgana, and Karina. Are you on the chat? Mm. Are you watching us? Karina, Karina, we don't know. Okay, so, so let's, continue. let's continue. Now we have, we, now we have uh, three books. Okay, so the first book goes to 82. 82. Aldi Mari, or Aldi Mari, I don't know. Or Aldi Mary. Or Aldi Mary, de Lima Campus. Aldi Mari, de Lima Campus. So, number 82 received the first book here. This is the book, the remember? The one that is organized yes. by Tiago. And uh, Monica Mano Trindade Ferrat. Now we are going to the second book. Number, that is going to 197. Edmilson Fernandes da Silva Jr. I, I, I saw know. him. I saw, I saw him. him in the chat. I wanted him. Yes. <laughs> On that, in the morning, I, I saw him there. Yes. So, Edmilson Fernandes da Silva Jr., you're going to receive this book here. Congratulations. Now, the last book goes to 34. 34. Isabella Cristiani. Isabella Cristiani, number 34. You received the, the last book. Yes. Yes. Now we are going to online courses from Cambridge. Yes. The first, the first course is teaching grammar. Okay. okay. So it's number 31. Number 31, Francisca Raquel Alves Moreira. I think I know her. She's from Betania. Aldeia. Aldeia. Yes. yes. Oh. Raquel, is that you? Really? Congratulations. So she, she received the course teaching grammar. Yes. Right. And now the last one that is teaching writing. Right? right? It's number five. Number five, Elade Gabriela Silva Magalhães. Elade Gabriela Silva here. Magalhães. So, these are the winners. And I hope you are, I don't know if the people, they are online right now, but I, I hope they can watch this presentation, this transmission, this broadcast after and then they can check that we have, they have to send us an, an email, okay? So, before we say goodbye and say thank you, I have a, a list of places. A lot of people came to visit us, to watch us, to post on Padlet, to use the, the hashtag. And uh, can, I, can I read it or you want to read it? Can we share yes. the list? Okay. 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies first. Thank you. Piauí. Yay. Maranhão. Paraíba. Rio Grande do Sul. Sergipe. Rio Grande do Norte. Brasília. Pernambuco. I'm going to skip this. Rio Grande do Norte. Yes. São Paulo. Pernambuco, have I already said? Yes, I said. I said. Can I go to this one here? Yes. Canada! Canada! And also United States. Yes, yes. we have people from United States to, uh, today. So all of these states from different corners of Brazil, they were here. Or in the morning, Ceará, or in the Ceará. afternoon. Isabel, Ceará. Ceará. Yes, thank you. Yes, because we got this information from the Padlet and from some of the chats. Maybe uh, we didn't mention all the states, but I hope that... Uh, Maybe we have people from Sergipe, Sergipe. Sergipe. Okay, from okay. Uh, uh, Alagoas, I don't know, Bahia, 
in other states, Rio, de Janeiro. Yes. Okay. At least I am here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, to finish, to close our event, I would like to say thank you to all the team, the FOPLI team and the EPI organizing committee. I'm so grateful for everything you have done, all the videos you presented, all the, the mediation in the chat, and everything is, was yeah. perfect, yes? I'd like to say thank you to my friend Liani to be here with me with this mission to present. This is my first EPI presentation as a host, so we use it to have Mariana presenting our event. But this year, we tried to have something different in this uh, second online event because we all, we all think that next year we are going to be all together. Yes. yes? Because we are vaccinated, we are, uh, we are going to be protected so we can hug each other, we can grab a cup of coffee together and enjoy the eighth edition of Epi. It's going to be nice. We are going to have nice memories from yeah. these online editions. Once yes? upon a time, yes. right? <laughs> uh, I would like to thank everyone that has been here with us since, as I told you before, since 9 a.m. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. It was a pleasure. Yes, it was a pleasure. Um, the, the the tears here are from happiness, and because we are teachers, we are professors. We are here during a Saturday, working, having fun. Of course, I always tell my students, we only learn when we have fun, when we like what we do. And we are very grateful to have you all here. Thank you so much. And let's be very good teachers and happy teachers and professors. Guys, thank you so much for this wonderful yes, Saturday. Yes, yes. So thank you guys a lot for your attendance. Please uh, fill in the form with your feedback. It's so important for us. If you don't follow us on uh, social networks, Instagram, at FOPLI, YFPB, FOPLI at uh, Facebook, uh, follow us on our YouTube channel. We have a lot of videos uh, interesting from uh, previous editions of EPI and something and other things else. And that's it. I think. We are we are done. Here. Yes. Mission accomplished. Check. Mission accomplished. Check. Yes. So Check. I'm so happy. And this is a I don't know. I have no more words to say. So thank you guys. It was nice. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye guys. Thank you.